Hi, my name's Andy and welcome to this 17th edition of About Radio. In the previous edition I showed you the IF uh, amplifier and uh, now I'll take you through the circuit diagram and uh, I'll try and cover the rest of the uh, audio output stages in this uh, video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching that. How do I get out of this thing? The radio circuit that I'm talking about is for the GEC BC5645. You should be able to find it on the internet, uh, but if you can't find a copy of the circuit, let me know and I'll email one to you. These are the items that I've talked about so far. The output of the IF transformers is taken into the control grid of the IF amplifier and that signal of course is the IF frequency with the audio content in it as I've shown in a previous video. The resistor in the cathode circuit there sets the negative bias uh, for the valve, in this case it's about uh, just over 2 volts negative and the capacitor provides the RF bypass. I just wanted to add something else about that capacitor. Uh, in the audio range, say at uh, 10 kilohertz, the impedance of the capacitor is uh, something just over 48k ohms. And at uh, 470 kilohertz, the IF frequency, that drops to about 1000 ohms, or just, uh, just above uh, 1k. And uh, at uh, 100 megahertz, then its impedance drops right down to 4.8 ohms. Since preparing the graphics uh, for this video, I realize I may have missed out the negative feedback line that comes from the second diode in the IF amplifier there. And so it comes in down uh, just below the zero line and then back up and feeds to the bottom of the IF transformer there. So I think I missed that out. So I'll mention it here. And uh, that negative voltage goes up uh, through the resistor and it finds its way onto the control grid of the IF amp. The screen grid is pulled up to the HT positive rail by the resistor there and it's held stable and decoupled by the capacitor to the right and to the one below connected to the cathode circuit. The suppressor grid is connected to ground and has been discussed in an earlier video. The current being drawn by the anode of the valve is of course being drawn from the positive HT rail and it's uh, drawn through the primaries of both of the IF transformers and in doing so it produces the magnetic field that couples with the secondary of uh, those transformers. The top transformer there is actually the uh, ratio detector and I've talked about that in a previous video. The lower transformer is the second IF for the amplitude modulated frequencies and we'll pick it up from there. So the audio information is magnetically coupled to the secondary of the IF transformer and it has with it of course the intermediate frequency uh, and that needs to be stripped off and the whole thing rectified or detected and that's done by the diode in the audio amplifier and that's uh, the first diode is connected to the top of the IF transformer and then uh, you'll see it comes down and it uh, comes to that potentiometer which is the volume control and uh, to ground and the signal is picked off uh, via the capacitor and it's fed to the control grid of the triode so the valve is a double diode triode 
and uh, it is literally two diodes in a triode and uh, they, those diodes can be redrawn and uh, I'll, I'll do that now and it just might make it easier to understand what's happening there. Okay, here on the left I've uh, redrawn the uh, IF transformer, so here there's its primary and secondary and you'll see the secondary is connected to the diode and that's exactly the same as it is in the circuit uh, on the, the right and then uh, from the other end of the IF transformer it comes to the potentiometer. I've left off some of the uh, filter capacitors and the resistors uh, but essentially that's the same drawing and uh, sorry the same circuit and the signal is being picked off uh, the variable resistor that goes through the capacitor to the grid of the valve and if you look at that uh, little circuit in the middle of that uh, group on the left you say that's that's really the basis of a crystal set and uh, as I say just to demonstrate that th th this is uh, a fact what I've done is I've disconnected the uh, two diodes in the radio um, of the double diode triode and I've replaced them with two discrete diodes just so that you can see them functioning. Here I've disconnected the capacitors and resistors that uh, go to pins 5 and 6 that's the two diodes of the valve and here I'm just pointing out the two diodes uh, that I've duly rigged into place and you can see there that uh, those two terminals 5 and 6 are disconnected and all we need to do now is uh, switch the radio on and try it that's VHF So I just thought you might find that interesting. Uh, these are the diodes that I used. It was just the first packet of diodes that uh, I had grabbed. Uh, so um, anyway, they uh, they did the job. Okay, so going back to the circuit diagram, I've um, uh, marked up in blue the uh, resistors and diodes that I'd missed off before. And uh, the resistor under the diode is the uh, cathode resistor. And moving to the right, the uh, capacitor that's coupled to the top of the IF transformer, uh, that's um, bleeding off uh, some of the RF, so the intermediate frequency and any RF uh, radio frequency uh, is being drawn off there and then the signal carries on down uh, through that blue resistor uh, that I've put in and again that's acting as a filter and it's working with uh, the next blue capacitor down and um, by the time the signal gets to the top of the volume control part there, and that's what that variable resistor is uh, all of the high frequency content uh, should have been removed and then it's just the audio signal that is uh, taken off uh, through the um, uh, wiper of the volume control through that capacitor and onto the grid of the valve so, and I just wanted to show you uh, those diodes in the circuit because I think the double diode triode uh, looks very confusing and you may think that the um, anodes are supplying volts or something like that but they're not they're, they're just diodes so hopefully that um, helps to make things a little bit clearer for you 
If we look now at the diode on the right of the valve, we'll see that the uh, signal is fed from the top of the IF transformer via that series capacitor onto the uh, anode of the diode. So uh, that diode, of course, is referenced to ground uh, via the cathode. Uh, so the signal coming off there and going down uh, to the bottom of the image, that's a, a negative voltage. And uh, those two resistors and the capacitor uh, below the uh, ground rail or zero rail condition the voltage so by the time it gets to the uh, resistor uh, marked with the circle there, uh, the signal is essentially a DC level, a negative DC level with uh, just a little bit of ripple from the uh, audio content uh, but that DC level is varied uh, high and low subject to the strength of the station being received. And of course that's the AVC line into the frequency changer valve for the amplitude modulated signals. The audio signal is taken from the anode of the uh, AF amplifier and you'll see that there's a, a little capacitor that goes to ground and that again is just bleeding off any RF content so it's a um, uh, 330 picofarad capacitor so it's a very uh, high impedance to AF uh, signals and a low impedance to radio frequency signals so that prevents uh, any uh, RF being passed through to the output valve. Okay, uh, that about wraps it up for this session. I was hoping to have uh, completed the circuit but as usual I've rabbited on for too long. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, well I hope you found that uh, of interest. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.